This is part three of your biology EFC review. This uh, covers strands four and five. Strand four is about biological processes and systems, and the first question is describe the interactions that occur among these animal systems, endocrine, nervous, digestive, immune, and reproductive. So we're going to talk about the functions of each system, and then we can talk about how they interact with each other. First of all, the endocrine system interacts with all of these systems, okay, and it has it, hormones that affect and interact with all systems. Not every hormone interacts with every system, but there are hormones from that system that interact with all the others in one way or another. The nervous system interacts with all of these also because all systems have some kind of nervous system interaction, whether it's nerve endings in the skin that let you feel or whether it's telling your um, digestive system to uh, undergo peristalsis to carry the food through the system. There's all kinds of interaction between these between the nervous system and all these systems. The digestive system interacts definitely with the endocrine system because of the insulin glucagon uh, hormones that affect how uh, glucose is metabolized and stored. And the nervous system for sure because the nervous system stimulates the muscle contractions that move um, the, um, the food through the system. Um, the immune system and the, rep and the reproductive system less so, although they both get nutrients from the um, digestive system and um, that then there's a lot of interaction there just because of the nutrients that's the only really thing the uh, immune system interacts with the endocrine and nervous systems the endocrine system uh, is involved in stimulating the um, the um, immune system cells and the nervous system also uh, allows the immune system to know that there's something going on in the body but there's less interaction with the others um, there, the, the, of course, immune system cells, when they are uh, defending the body, can interact with just about any cell of the body, depending on what, um, what the condition is that's occurring. And then the reproductive system interacts mostly with the endocrine system, but also with the nervous system. And uh, like I said earlier, because the digestive system provides nutrients for all these, then you, can, you could say that they all interact together with that. Re immune system, also, if there's some kind of infection in the reproductive system, would respond there as well. There will be a video about negative feedback that, that I will post on Edmodo along with the video, these videos. Next we have interactions among plant systems, transport, reproduction, and response. So transport carries the water and nutrients to all cells. Remember that the transport includes the xylem, which carries the water, and the phloem, which carries the food or the nutrients to all the cells. And um, that uh, these are found in the vascular cylinder, in the root, in the stem and uh, transport the materials to and from all cells of the plant. Reproduction allows the plant, plant to increase numbers and spread to other locations. Um, it is in some ways a response of the plant to that kind of stimulus. <clears throat> and then finally the response includes the tropisms. These are the plant's response to its environment, whether it's um, phototropism as it moves toward the light, whether it's thigmotropism as the, as the stems grow up and the roots grow down, um, I'm sorry, gravitropism, if it's thigmotropism where they're responding to touch, those are all going to be responses to the environment of the plant. Next we have feedback mechanism and how this can be used to maintain homeostasis. Feedback is a necessary part of the endocrine system for sure, but all of the body systems are involved in feedback one way or the other. An example here is hormone control of blood sugar levels. When the blood sugar is low, then glucagon stimulates glycogen uh, in the liver to be released and in the muscles. And then that is changed to glucose, which then can um, raise the blood sugar level and stop the glucagon production. The blood when the blood sugar level is high, then insulin causes glucose to be transformed to glu glycogen and be stored in the liver and muscles, which lowers the blood sugar level and stops the insulin production. So this is a negative and a positive feedback system where these two hormones interact with each other. The interaction of the two maintains a stable blood sugar level, which is the most beneficial to your cells. There are numerous other types of feedback mechanisms. Um, in your body, a lot of them relate to hormones, but some relate to temperature control and other things like that, water control. Um, and so there are a number of ways that you can apply this, but they all work basically the same way, like a thermostat works. Be sure and watch the video about the, about the uh, feedback mechanisms. The uh, 
Inter the strand five is about interdependence within environmental systems. This is the ecology part of biology. And so we just recently finished this. It shouldn't be difficult for you to answer questions about this. Most everybody did really, really well on the test that we had on, on, envir on uh, ecology, so this should be relatively easy for you. Uh, first of all, explain how populations and species diversity change through the process of ecological succession. That's talking about how the area changes after some kind of disaster. Primary succession, remember, begins on bare rock. Usually only lichens and other soil forming organisms can survive on bare rock, but they're going to help produce the soil. Sometimes it, it's produced as a result of wave action or, or weathering of the rock, and in addition to um, activity of organisms. As soil is formed, then plants can invade and, and, and start growing, and then that will support animals. As more larger um, plants support more animals, then that's going to increase the diversity of the ecosystem. Secondary succession begins where soil already exists, and so the return of plant and animal species is going to occur more quickly, but the similar results are more species diversity. As you move toward from the um, disaster to the climax community, which is the ultimate sustainable community that can develop. Identify these relationships. These are various kinds of symbiotic relationships. You should be able to, to identify and answer questions about each of them. Predation is when one animal huts down, kills, and eats another one. That's pretty easy to understand. This is a predator-prey relationship. When you look at the population graph or pred predator-prey relationship, remember the uh, population spike of the um, predator is going to follow a population spike of the prey and same thing with the decline. As the prey population declines, then the predator population is going to decline as well. Parasitism is when one organism lives on or in another one and then harming the host. So the host is going to be the one that's harmed here and the, uh, and the parasite is going to be the one that benefits from the relationship. In commensalism, two species live together. One of them gets some good out of the relationship. The other is neither harmed nor helped. And in mutualism, two species live together. Uh, both of them benefit from the relationship. The last thing on here is competition, when you have two species that compete for the same resources, and that's when you're going to end up with something that's going to happen to one of the populations. They're, uh, they're either going to... Um, one of them will probably move on or die out, or there will be further kind of competition that can lead to the decline of both species. Next, analyze the flow of matter and energy through the trophic levels. Remember, trophic levels are the levels of the food chain, whether it's a producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer, and so forth. These are questions about food chains, food webs, and ecological pyramids. So in all cases, the producer level has the most matter and energy, and as animals eat the plants and each other, only 10% of the available mass and energy are passed on to the next trophic level. So when you're looking at a food chain, remember, the most energy is available at the lowest level of the food chain. The least energy of that original energy is the amount that's available at the highest level. Describe how environmental change can impact ecosystem stability. When you reduce the biodiversity of an area by altering habitats or hunting animals to extinction, introducing toxic compounds, foreign species to new environments, you're going to decrease the number of organisms that are in the, in the ecosystem, and that is going to hamper uh, the development of that ecosystem into a healthy entity. It is important to maintain all of the members of the, of the community because you don't know which one might possibly be a keystone species that might cause the failure of all the others. So biodiversity is extremely important to maintain. Protecting the ecosystem will ensure natural habitats and interactions of many different species are preserved, and this will maintain the integrity of the ecosystem and the biosphere as a whole. This is the end of the EOC review videos. Um, make sure that you have your EOC review sheet completed when you come to class so that we can discuss any questions that you might have, anything you still don't understand, give further examples, more practice, etc. before you take your EOC next week. Good luck.